Council on International Non-Theatrical Events has awarded this film a Golden Eagle in token of its excellence and has selected it to represent the United States of America in international motion picture events abroad. In the 13th century, a disastrous series of droughts forced the American Indian in the Southwest to move to areas where the water supply was dependable. A favorable area was the upper Rio Grande Valley in northern New Mexico. In an area now known as Frijoles Canyon in the Pajarito Plateau, the ancient Pueblo Indians built a city. They built dwellings on the valley floor and along the cliffs of canyons that cut back into the mountains. Water and game were plentiful. They cultivated the land. For about 350 years, they thrived here. Their dwellings accommodated as many as 600 people. They built kivas in which they held their ceremonies. No one knows exactly why the Pueblo Indians left this site. But the dramatic exodus of the canyon dwellers had been almost entirely accomplished by the time the Spaniards, under Francisco Coronado, arrived in 1540. Speculation arises as to which of the many possible natural causes were responsible. But however many, these ruins testify to problems that all ancient man faced, and that modern man still faces, solutions to the problems of survival. Scarcely 10 miles from these ruins, man built another city, a city of science, where he would seek new sources of knowledge upon which to base and expand, where he would study new sources of energy. One such source is known to be the energy contained in the nucleus of the atom. A key to this source of energy lies in a better understanding of the structure of the nucleus and the forces which hold it together. Thus, if man is to have a better understanding of the nature of matter, he must continue to study the atomic nucleus and learn how to utilize it for his future well-being. At the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, scientists and engineers probe and study this abstruse nuclear world, a world where the scale of distance for nuclear forces is on the order of one-tenth of a millionth of a millionth of a centimeter. To further their study, Los Alamos built the Clinton P. Anderson Meson Physics Facility, which sits atop a two-mile-long mesa and is one of the largest nuclear research centers in the world. From its very inception in the early 1960s, the Clinton P. Anderson Meson Physics Facility was designed for multidisciplinary use in research and practical applications. Operative in 1972, it is a basic research tool that bridges the gap between low and high energy physics by making possible large-scale studies of nuclear structure in the medium energy range. This facility, also known as LAMF, the acronym from its original title, Los Alamos Meson Physics Facility is of international character, having a users group of approximately 1,000 members representing more than 290 institutions throughout the United States and more than 20 foreign countries. The consequence to this group is the fact that during the past year we have undertaken a full-scale research program and we have, in fact, seen some quite beautiful data emerge in a number of areas. There come to mind the very nice data with pions. This is a pion factory, and we have had already... The users group allows for a more formalized exchange of information and for the inflow of fresh scientific ideas to utilize the unique capabilities of the facility. 
the heart of the facility, is a high-intensity, half-mile-long linear accelerator, which, as the name implies, accelerates nuclear particles to high velocities. At LAMF, the particle is the proton, which is the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. The accelerator consists of three sections. The first section is the injector system, which has an ion source. Using high purity hydrogen gas, it provides the protons. The protons are formed into a beam and accelerated to an energy of three quarters of a million electron volts, or about 4% the velocity of light. A vacuum line and a set of focusing and steering magnets conduct the beam to the next section of the accelerator. The second section is a drift tube type of linear accelerator and is about 62 meters or approximately 200 feet long. It consists of a series of one meter diameter cylindrical tanks with tubes of increasing length suspended inside. Using simple animation, let's see how a particle is moved through the accelerator. A radio frequency alternating electric field is set up in the tanks. Particles entering the tank experience forward acceleration from the field during one half of the radio frequency cycle and are shielded from the backward force of the field as they pass through the drift tubes on the other half of the cycle. Acceleration and drifting proceed through 165 steps until the particles reach an energy of 100 million electron volts or about 40% the velocity of light. The third and longest section is known as a side-coupled cavity type of linear accelerator. It was developed especially for LAMF. The acceleration takes place in a series of individual cells. The power is fed to these cells through coupling cavities on the side of the structure, setting up strong alternating electric fields along the axis. Particles traveling along the axis experience a forward acceleration in those cells where the electric field is pointing in the direction of particle motion. These particles enter the next cell just as the direction of the electric field is reversing, and they again experience a forward acceleration. 4,800 cells later, and approximately one half mile downstream, the protons reach their final energy of 800 million electron volts and are moving at about 85% the velocity of light. After the proton beam leaves the accelerator, it strikes targets and produces mesons. What are mesons? How are they produced? Let's look at the structure of an atomic nucleus. For example, the nucleus of one of the lithium atoms. The nucleus of this atom has three protons and three neutrons. These particles are contained within the nucleus and are held together by one of the strongest forces known to man. This so-called nuclear glue, or binding force, is thought to be the result of the exchange of mesons between the protons and the neutrons. If sufficient energy can be imparted to the nucleus, mesons, which do not exist outside the nucleus, are created and released in the form of individual particles. Traveling at about 150,000 miles per second, the protons in the beam overcome the nuclear binding force, releasing neutrons, protons, and mesons. The meson of interest released by the medium energy beam at LAMF is the pi meson, or pion. In a larger view, we see the proton beam pass through a target which contains millions of atoms. To see how this effect is used to produce meson beams, let's look at a suitable target. Composed of a few centimeters of graphite, surrounded by steel and concrete shielding. As the proton beam passes through the target, particles are released. Magnetic focusing lenses capture and direct some of the pi mesons through channels in the shielding to experimental areas. 
To see how the beam is used, let's look at a schematic overview of the lamp accelerator and the experimental areas. We see the proton beam accelerate to 800 million electron volts, or about 85% the velocity of light. It passes through a switchyard. In the meson production hall, the main beam passes through several targets and continues on to the beam stop, where still other experiments are performed. Let's look at a few examples of how LAMP is used. The circular structure at the top of your screen is designated Experimental Area C and houses a high-resolution spectrometer. The dome has a 14-meter radius and is covered with 5 to 6 meters of earth for shielding. The spectrometer consists of a series of focusing and high-precision bending magnets which transport the reaction products to detectors at the top about 12 meters above the floor. It weighs about 400 tons and can be moved on air pads around its center point so that reactions can be studied at different angles to the incoming beam direction. The proton beam passes through a reaction chamber at the center and is transported across the room to a shielded beam stop. The studies performed are designed to provide precise data on the interaction of protons with other nuclei. On the other side of the main beam line is the weapons neutron research facility. While primarily devoted to neutron physics research for national defense purposes, the studies at this facility will also have application for basic physics and material science and the development of nuclear reactors. Short pulses of protons are transported from the main beam line and directed to various targets producing short, intense bursts of neutrons. The interaction of these neutrons with various materials can be studied with time-of-flight techniques. In the meson production hall, the main beam passes through several targets where a number of experiments are performed using secondary meson beams. One example of the research that can be done with these beams is the work on the pion and particle physics channel known as P-cubed. This channel provides high energy pion beams for the study of the interaction between elementary particles and nuclei. Practical applications of nuclear phenomena and nuclear related technology to immediate societal concerns are also being studied. Among the practical applications at LAMF is the production of certain radioisotopes for use in medicine and industry. Also, studies of the effect of radiation on materials are being conducted to develop better alloys for use in reactors. Perhaps the most exciting of the practical applications is the possible use of negative pi mesons for the treatment of deep-seated, inoperable cancers. Negative pi mesons have the unique characteristic of being easily captured by a nucleus when they are slowed down and come to rest. The excess energy resulting from the capture, in a sense, explodes the nucleus, and short-range, highly ionizing radiations are emitted. Unlike cobalt and X-ray therapy, it is possible to deposit this radiation at a prescribed depth in tissue, such as in a tumor volume, while minimizing radiation to healthy tissues. It is at this point that the highly ionizing radiations destroy cancerous cells. Following careful physical and biological measurements, a clinical trial program based on pion therapy has been in progress with human patients at LAMF and has now advanced to include a clinical program designed for cure. All right. I guess I need my glasses. George, you. All right. Now, it has to go over that way. Just towards you, Stephanie. All right. Wait. The biomedical facility was originally constructed under joint funding by the National Cancer Institute and the Atomic Energy Commission, now the Department of Energy. The clinical trial program is supported by the National Cancer Institute and is under the direction of radiotherapists from the University of New Mexico Medical School and the Cancer Research and Therapy Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. LAMF has also produced some important technological spin-off. 
in 1975, cancer eye was the leading individual cause for cattle carcass condemnation by the United States Department of Agriculture, when more than 20,000 carcasses were condemned. Working with a number of veterinarians and cattle ranchers, Los Alamos scientists developed a simple, effective, and economical technique for the treatment of cancer eye, whereby radio frequency currents are used to heat a tumor to 50 degrees centigrade for about 30 seconds. Numerous models were developed and tested, and now a commercial unit, which plugs into the cigarette lighter of a rancher's pickup, is available. The results in obtaining regression of tumors in the eyes of cattle have been highly successful, and the use of this device represents significant savings in cattle for market and dollars for the rancher. Another important spin-off application is the medical x-ray unit whose design is based on the side-coupled cavity type of linear accelerator. Because these x-ray units are more effective and less expensive than what is currently available, private industry adapted Los Alamos designs and several hundred units are already in operation in hospitals around the country. These small electron accelerators allow improved treatment for many thousands of cancer patients with certain types of tumors. Like ancient man, modern man seeks to have a better understanding of his environment. There is strong scientific evidence that the atom, and in particular its nucleus, holds the key to many of man's questions questions that ancient man could not even envision. Through the use of sophisticated tools and advanced technology, man is continuing his vital search for understanding. This search is paying off in direct benefits to society in fundamentally important fields such as medicine, biology, agricultural research, and industrial processes. If man is to further his insight into the many problems and solutions that still lie before him, he must study, he must experiment, he must understand and apply. <laughs>